So you want a Lotus. You board with your Boxster and you want to experience what a strip set sports car is really like. So what do you go for? An Elise? Or an Exige perhaps? Or perhaps you fancy unplugging your braid entirely and try this. The Lotus 211. Lotus you can obtain. The curb weight of just 670 kilos dry and 255 brake horsepower on tap makes the latest offerings from Lotus seem a bit, well, lardy, I suppose. The 211 is based off the Elise chassis, but just more of everything, or less in the case of the 211. The car was developed in the early noughties with the purpose of entering the Group 4 class of motor racing, up against the likes of Caymans and BMW M cars, but we'll come to that a bit later on. The car was developed with the same supercharged Toyota four-cylinder layout that's been favoured by the Norfolk company for some years now, putting out a more than adequate 255 brake horsepower and nearly as much torque, the 211 combined with its lack of weight will hit 60 in a sub 4 seconds. But actually, no one really cares how fast it is in a straight line. It's the details that really matter on these two cars. The car I have in front of me today is chassis number 61, of about approximately 300, however, being Lotus, the numbers are a bit shaky on there. Most people reckon it's around 250, some of which are pure race cars. Those are quite a from the UK and Japan. Both countries allow the 211 to be road legal, with a slightly toned down road pack compared to the track pack. Once you've uh, gracefully thrown yourself over the doorless, uh, doorless bodywork, you realise that uh, you're strapping yourself into a proper racing car. No lashings of Alcantara in here or anything like that. Aircon or any modcon of any sort, for that matter. But you do get, actually, a windscreen. So, you know, you got a one-upper Caterham somehow. Um, there really is very little in here. I have two buttons here for my lights. I have a beautiful uh, machined aluminium gear lever in the middle. And the standard, well, to anyone that has been a Lotus Ball, the uh, standard Elise instruments here. This dial down here, you've got a 30 stage traction control system, um, which today I will be leaving very much on since this is not my car. And then under that, just here, you've got uh, the biggest, reddest, angriest button that you can find, which uh, I'm sure you can guess what that does. So what have we got here? 255 brake horsepower and 670 kilos of weight. Um, first thing I can tell you that the damping is sublime. You expect it to crash around all over the curbs, but it just doesn't want to do that. Absolutely planted on the on the road. Got to be a little bit careful over these jumps. But the brakes are tremendous. Bloody hell! So what you want to do is you want to turn it in and slowly squeeze the power, get the back down squatted. And you can hear that supercharger just come in. Listen to that noise! And we got a little cattle grid to slow us down. Lovely. So we're running on, um, Advan AAA R's, which is an extremely uh, questionably slick tyre for the road. Um, together with the front diffuser or the front splitter and the rear diffuser and the rear wing, there is an awful lot of aero uh, on tap. And the combination of all of that with the uh, bonded aluminium chassis, you feel absolutely everything right up through your arse in the seat. It's something else. I mean, there aren't many things that you drive that weigh so little. The steering is absolutely telepathic through the steering wheel. It's so light, it's unassisted, and you can do it with one finger. It's incredible. Uh, and as soon as you start putting any sort of load on the front axle, especially when the aero starts working, you just get this weight that pushes the front of the car down. And it's it's one of the first road cars you have to drive with aero that you have to sort of learn to trust, a bit like some of the sort of LM car or something with serious aero. Um, 
it's really quite astonishing so you come out a bit wider and you come in but as i said before you make the car squat with the power um oh. and the brakes like you just you look at the brake pedal and it just stops on a dime the uh, the discs themselves are not massive they're actually rather on the small side but when you're not stopping any weight it just absolutely, absolutely throws you forward in the chair it's something else now I guess we've uh, done enough road driving so I think it's about time we take it to its uh, natural habitat and we'll go and find ourselves a racetrack Right, so what I thought I'd do is uh, we had a few issues on the day and it turns out that I was going to do a little bit more coaching than anticipated here at uh, Cadwell Park, which we were going to be doing some filming for for the day. So instead, uh, we have some of this onboard GoPro footage that you can see. Um, and I think it's probably best and if we take you through a lap um, in the Lotus 211 around Cadwell Park. Right, so you're coming over the mountain right here. You come far to the left, tiny bit of brake. You dive in to crest that curb, and then you just roll it through on the power through each one of these little turns. And as soon as you see the second stick, you brake hard down into second, and you have a very late apex. Straight in, and you're already on the power, running forward. Stay in second gear, but dab a brake, turn in, you wait for the little cone which as you can see James has missed here and you run out to the left all the way to the left and you absolutely floor it all the way down the straight you're going to start coming over to the right ready for a smaller braking zone than you think fourth and you just glide the car in power all the way through get the car squatted down get it stable and then a small braking down down to third and there's a little cone and this is a completely blind corner you come over and hope that it's still there all the way to the left see the first cone turn in and as soon as you touch that cone you'll power all the way all the way flat out down into the dip and up over the crest you're getting up to about 120 miles an hour here in this car which doesn't sound like a lot but around Cadwell is more than enough biggest braking zone down into third all the way down it's a very heavy braking zone straight in and you're already on the power again this car is so benign it's absolutely perfect for a beginner as scary as it looks so this is an odd corner you come all the way out let it wash wide which feels very unnatural you stay in third dab a brake and the gooseneck is extremely difficult because it's blind you're in one way and then you've got to find the apex of the next corner and now you are into the biggest braking zone all the way down third gear it's absolutely stamping on the brakes there then you power all the way through run the car out wide heading straight towards the bottom of the mountain, which is probably Cadwell's most iconic corner. Back down into third, very late braking, all the way out, turn in late, clip the apex, power always on the power because you don't want to stop moving it over the mountain, car goes light, and that's your lap across, uh, across the line. In summary, the car has no competition. Other cars in this category aren't nearly as sophisticated as the 211 in road manners or steering, or for that matter, nowhere near giving you the electric sense of excitement. I may not be the best driver in the world, but the 211 certainly flatters my ego enough to make me feel as though I am. So the next time you look for a sports car, in quotation marks of course, ask yourself what is really important. Should I be different from everyone? Am I going to use it often? Do I want to live every moment of a terrifyingly quick 20 mile journey? If the answer is yes, then keep your Porsches. Besides, why bother taking the roof off a box when you can have a car without that inconvenience? Thanks for watching guys. If you could hit that like button and that subscribe button, maybe put the notification bell on and leave us any advice and anything you'd like to see and we'll see you in the next one.